So some of us who are of a certain age might remember the boos and hisses and the cries of sacrilege that accompanied the release of the rock opera, Jesus Christ Superstar, more than 50 years ago. And that reaction seems almost quaint now when, when we look back, when we look back on, on the time. So the musical debuted when I was around 18. I remember I was a, a freshman in college and by that time, I had found my parish church, and in fact, my whole religion, flat and dry and uninspiring, unwilling to address the issues that I saw unfolding around me, the war in Vietnam, um, the racial and the gender discrimination that I saw in every area of my life. And so I just stopped going to church. And instead I listened to folk music, my favorite, Peter, Paul and Mary, they're still, my, they're still my favorite. And my kids used to make fun of me. They said, are you really still listening to that stuff? And I say, yeah, I still do. Because for me, that it asked the most important question, the question that I really needed an answer for, which was how many deaths does it take till, it, till we know that too many people have died? And so at the same time, Catholics then, like Catholics now, fervently mourned the torture, execution, and death of Jesus every year. And back then, you know, we covered the statues in purple and we prayed the stations of the cross. But other deaths, deaths that were equally um, upsetting, like the little girls that were killed in the bombing of the church in Birmingham, or the sheer numbers of American soldiers and Vietnam, uh, Vietnamese people, they never even got a passing mention in the church, at least in my church, maybe it got a mention in your own. And unlike Jesus who fed and healed and cried over people who lived in this world, the church to me seemed fixated on the next. For them, Jesus was an impassive king ready to pass judgment from afar and not a red hot lover of humanity here on earth. So where did the real Jesus, the one that we read about in scriptures, where, where did he fit into this world that we saw around us then and you know what we see around us now? And for me, Superstar had the guts to ask questions that were never ever raised in church, lest our, our faith seem weak. And it laid bare the questions in the lyrics of the opera. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, who are you? What did you sacrifice? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Don't get me wrong. Do you think that you are who they say you are? Those questions actually altered the trajectory of my life and actually um, firmed up my religious faith and sort of made me into the person that I am now. It's kind of funny to think that, uh, you know, a musical can do that to a person. And I don't know about you, but I still ask myself those same questions. And 50 years later, believe it or not, I still get different answers. As Palm Sunday approaches and throughout Holy Week, I'll listen again to Jesus Christ's superstar. And I've had the Messiah to my repertoire back then. I, I don't think I knew anything about the Messiah. And while the latter glosses over the awful parts of Holy Week, with strings and trumpets and hints at the glorious conclusion of the Easter story, the rising crescendo of the chorus, crucify him, crucify him. You have a, remember Caesar, you have a duty, crucify him. Makes my skin crawl as do the 40 lashes strung out in stark numerical order. One, two, three, all the way up to 40. Then comes the sound of the unforgiving nails hammered into soft flesh and the disturbing canned jeers in the background, followed by Jesus's ragged, despairing voice calling out in agony, my God, I am so thirsty. 
And it is there, well, usually before that, that I tell Alexa to stop because I just can't. It's just so upsetting listening that the jeers are what really get me, um, that people would laugh at such a horrible thing happening to another human being. And yet we know that happens. Well, the majestic strains of the Hallelujah Chorus assure us that everything is going to turn out fine. No such thing is ever promised in Jesus Christ Superstar. And perhaps it is that lack of surety that was the turnoff for so many believers some 50 years ago. The late great theologian Marcus Borg wrote that all of scripture, including the passion story that we read today, was written for the societies that produced it and not really to us or even for us. It was not written in stone by the hand of God for all time. And there is a reason for this. Unlike the verse in the Hebrews, people's understanding of God is not the same as it was yesterday, as it is today, or it will be tomorrow. Believing in the immutability of scripture and religious laws sets us all up for failure and divine um, punishment as we try to wrestle ourselves into the straitjacket of the past. But understanding scripture as metaphor broadens our understanding of the world's suffering, all the world's suffering in all times, exemplified in the unjust arrest, the torture, and the execution of a completely innocent man named Jesus. Within the paradigm of scripture as metaphor, we set the passion of Jesus within the drama of our own history as we can see violence for what it is, an affront to God and a curse upon humanity. The good news today is that we can ask without boos and hisses and accusations of sacrilege, we can say, we can ask, Jesus Christ, superstar, who are you? What have you sacrificed? Tell me, tell me, don't get me wrong. I only want to know. And perhaps we will get the answers to th the answers that we need to address the suffering of the world. And for me, the answer is as clear today since I was 18 years old. No person ever should die for the sake of a nation or for the sake of a religion.